We are now joined by the newly sworn in Premier of Manitoba, Wab Kanu. Premier, thank you for taking the time. Thanks for having me. You know, at the Fort Garry Hotel uh, on election night, you were obviously elated, but today at the swearing-in ceremony, there were uh, many times when the camera would turn to you and you were either fighting back tears or wiping away tears. What were you feeling today? Well, it's just uh, an extraordinarily uh, strong feeling of humility. You know, we had luminaries from our province like uh, Anita Neville and Murray Sinclair presiding. We had former cabinet minister and Kevin Chief, who was doing, you know, Métis jigging and bringing up the uh, up-tempo energy. It was just such an uplifting ceremony that uh, as somebody who has been honoured with this extraordinary opportunity to serve the people of Manitoba, I just felt so humble that um, we were able to, to, to witness what we did today, which was people from different walks of life coming together. Coming together. And, just, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, as you say, coming together, and you've chosen Uzoma Asaguara as the first non-binary minister in Manitoba history, if not Canada's. You've chosen them as your Minister of Health and Healthcare being a big issue during the provincial campaign. What kind of mandate have you given the minister? What do you hope is actually achieved by your government, for example, in the next 100 days? Well, it's a huge task. You know, fixing healthcare, as everyone in Canada can appreciate, is a very tall order and here in manitoba it's perhaps even more challenging given some of the the bad outcomes that we've had over the past few years and so what i've asked minister uh, asaguera to do is to start with the staff start with the people in the healthcare system and as we staff up along the way let's get a handle on emergency room weights let's lay the foundation so we can build new emergency rooms such as at the uh, Victoria Hospital, which is in, in Southside Winnipeg, suburban Winnipeg, and uh, to fulfill our election commitments to the people of Manitoba. But along the way, everything that we do in healthcare has to start with the staff. And Uzoma Asaguera, in addition to making history in numerous respects, uh, is also somebody who comes from the front lines of healthcare. They were a registered psychiatric nurse. They are somebody who's worked in long-term care facilities. They are somebody who is still very closely connected to the healthcare workforce, and I think that that will serve them well and our province well as we look to repair our healthcare system. You know, you also appointed Bernadette Smith, a member of your cabinet. In particular, she now heads this new Ministry of Housing, Addictions and Homelessness. She's also the minister responsible for mental health. Can you talk to us about the grouping of those priorities and why you've decided to put it all under one ministry? Yeah, uh, Winnipeg along with many other communities in our province like Thompson and Brandon and others has seen so much more visible signs of the impacts of homelessness and some of the related social challenges. We see them in bus shelters, we see these challenges underneath bridges and in communities right across the province. And we have committed, after listening to the experts and listening to leaders in community and in the world of business and in society, that we need to take a cross-departmental approach. We need to take an approach that breaks down barriers, cuts through the excuses, and just delivers the wraparound services that people need to be successful in uh, getting off of the streets and into housing. And so the appointment of Mr. Smith today is uh, representative of a symbolic change in our government where we're going to bring everything under one roof from the housing programs to the addictions programs to the other wraparound supports that people will need. And so as we as a government cut through the silos and foster greater collaboration, we're sending a message to the other levels of government that we want to work with them in a very positive and constructive way across Manitoba and to the community organizations and business leaders that we all want to work together. And so my hope is that by bringing everything under one roof and in one uh, united uh, approach, that we'll be able to, to replicate the same thing when we work with the other levels of government and with community as well. Okay, let me pick up on the theme of breaking down silos, because not only are you the Premier, you're also now Minister for Indigenous Reconciliation, the Minister responsible for Intergovernmental Affairs and uh, International Relations. Why did you decide to assume those titles, in particular Minister of Reconciliation? Well, I think most people across Canada would know that uh, premiers uh, appoint themselves as a minister for intergovernmental affairs, and it means that you're taking the lead in engaging with the federal government and with the municipal governments, as well as, you know, other uh, state and, uh, you know, uh, foreign governments as well. And so the message that I want to send with this appointment 
to First Nations and to Métis government leaders is that our government is going to respect you as the leaders of government. We are going to take you seriously and set a tone at the highest levels that we are going to have a respectful relationship and a positive relationship so that we can make things better for everybody in Manitoba. So does that mean that you'll take personal responsibility uh, for overseeing a search of the Prairie Green Landfill? I believe that I will have a, a leadership role in that conversation, but of course I will be working with the other members of Cabinet sworn in today who have a particular interest in this file. What I would say that our next step on this is, now that we've been sworn in, is we are going to reach out to the families and have a conversation with them so that we can find a respectful path forward. You know, uh, when I was leaving Manitoba after the provincial uh, election, I was reading an article from Tanya Talaga in the Globe and Mail, and she said your election was essentially the, the, the coming of the eighth, the lighting of the eighth fire. What do you make of that? Well, I think there's high expectations for our government. We could say that across many different communities. Certainly, Indigenous peoples, I think, have high expectations for our administration. People in rural Manitoba have high expectations. They've sent uh, people from communities like Brandon, like Dauphin, from some other rural municipalities to sit with us. People from all walks of life are optimistic that uh, we're going to deliver for them. And so I feel a great responsibility to do just that, to do a good job. We ran a campaign about bringing people in Manitoba together rather than dividing people. I'm very proud that our province embraced that message. And now it's incumbent on us as the newly sworn in uh, government officials to deliver on that, starting with health care and starting with affordability. Premier Canoe, uh, thank you again for the time. Congratulations today. Thank you so much, Michael.